Hello, everyone, and welcome to On the Move, presented by Momentum Multifamily. I'm your host, Brandon Gardner. The purpose of this series is to keep you up to date on everything in the multifamily world by interviewing industry experts. Today, we're focused on interior design and are fortunate enough to be joined by Lisa Landry, the CEO of Landry Designs. Welcome, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Brendan. Of course. Uh, so why don't we get things started by having you tell us a little bit about your business and how you got into interior design. Okay. Uh, Landry Designs, I started about 25 years ago, actually. And as a child, I'd always been that kid who rearranged her room all the time and helped her friends rearrange their rooms. And uh, I always loved clothing and everything to do with visual things. I, I was very affected by visual, how, how things look and how they make you feel and how changing something or organizing something can make you feel so much better and mood elevation and those kind of things. So uh, I ended up starting my own company, you know, many, many years ago now, and uh, just ended up getting into multifamily actually about 12 or 13 years ago and had never worked on multifamily before, just commercial and residential. And uh, I actually had a guy reach out to me that was a or is a property management company, and he manages 45 apartment communities in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And he said, I found your website. I love the work that I saw on there. I have 10 properties that need major CapEx work done this year. And I'm wondering if you could help me with that. And I just said, well, we've never done multifamily before, but I'm happy to come take a look and you know see what you need. So I met him in Dallas. And in my mind, I had that there were going to be these really nice apartments, you know, just driving up to them. And they weren't, they were like, you know, B and C class apartments, definitely like some C's that we looked at that day. And uh, as I got out of the car, I had to like, keep my face really neutral, not to show that I was surprised, you know, that they, that this is what we were looking at. I had just no idea about multifamily and how it works or that you do value add and things like that. So um, once I looked at the property, I was like, well, yeah, this is what we do all the time in kind of residential and commercial anyway, it's sort of a blend of the two and I'm happy to help you. And so we did those 10 projects that one year, and I ended up having five of them professionally photographed, and we entered them into an international design contest that was judged by magazine editors from across the country, and they didn't have like a multifamily category. They just had a commercial category, so I entered them there, and they actually swept that category and won first, second, and third, um, and they were all B and C class properties, you know, so we just got so intrigued with the whole idea of multifamily and how you could take something that doesn't look very nice and make it look really nice and start elevating the property. And uh, through the years, then after we've done hundreds of them now, I've just, I started learning so much about how you can take something and elevate the value and then people are selling them relatively quickly. And so I got, you know, curious about that whole side of thing and things and uh, then a few years ago, I started investing and, and buying apartments myself. So it's kind of a, a nice mix of the two. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. That's that's pretty amazing. Like the first go around with it winning awards. Uh, I was going to ask about the differences between residential and, and multifamily. So I'd be curious to understand what you learned from that that first project or this first series of projects and what you've noticed from a um, a difference in designing or your process as it relates to those two things? Yeah, I think with residential, you're working with one particular family. You know what I mean? So you're really focusing everything about around their lifestyle and around their tastes and all of those kind of elements, like what's the structure of the house look like and things like that. Um, with commercial, it's completely different because, and not even talking about multifamily, but just with commercial, you're working with a team of people typically that are working in offices and maybe they have a lobby and they run their business out of there with, with multifamily. It's a blend of the two because it's almost like you're walking into someone's living room when you go into the lease, the leasing office with a home office in there or something. So it's kind of a combination, but we're really looking for different things with multifamily. We're trying to figure out what is the tenant base of this community and how does that need to feel? And what would make them feel comfortable? And what is the business plan? Are we trying to elevate the tenant base? What's around it? What's the surrounding community like? What are the surrounding properties like? What, what's the competition? Um, are we the top of the market? Are we the bottom of the market? You know, we're really looking at all of those kinds of elements and considering how can we make this feel uh, amazing? And, and there's really three things that we always talk about with with design and branding and image. And, you know, the first one is we have potential 
residents coming in, potential tenants, and how do we get them to be interested to think, oh, I might want to live here. And literally, you have about 15 seconds from them walking into the leasing office when they make that decision, whether they would even consider living there or not. So what we do from a design standpoint is super important for that, like potential residents, but also the current residents that live there, how can we make sure that they renew? How do we get that renewal rate up? Because it's so expensive to turn these units. And if we can just get them to renew and even maybe give them a small renewal offer of some sort that's just $500 worth of upgrades or something like that, then we're saving so much money and boosting that you know, NOI. And then the third thing is the on-site team that works there. So how do we make sure that they love coming to work, that it's a really nice place to work in? It feels um, beautiful. It feels functional. You know, they are proud to work there. They, they're they not embarrassed to present these rents that are probably increasing because they know that the whole property is being elevated. Um, so when you don't have turnover of your on-site team, that saves you a ton of money too, you know, in training and and um, just the tenant base knowing and having the relationship with that on-site team and you have that continuity. So we're always looking at those three elements uh, because we know from the investor side of things that the NOI, you know, is the most important thing, boosting the NOI and the value of the property. But we do that through elevating the community itself, uh, the whole property. And we, we really look at everything about the property. Yeah, it must be an interesting dynamic to try to balance those factors. And also, particularly when you have apartment complexes that might have hundreds of different tenants in there, right? How do you how do you balance an individual's uh, preferences with that of the community. Yes. And we're really spending a lot of time at the very beginning of the project. We like to come in and help a syndication team or an ownership team when they are even putting their LOI in, because we can help with budget allocation, like what budget range we think they should be in to put in their underwriting, you know, when they're doing their performa. So we like to get in at the beginning. And that's when we really find out about the property. What is going on with the property? Again, what is the tenant base? What, where do these people work? Are they white collar workers? Are they blue collar workers? Are there factories around? Or is there, you know, warehouses around? Or are there warehouses around? So we're really looking at all of those elements to determine what the community should look and feel like. Like if it's um, a Hispanic based community, they love color. They feel really comfortable with lots of color, and so we can make the property more vibrant. They they are drawn to that. They like living in that environment. And, you know, these are generalizations, but these are some things that we consider. Um, or, you know, if, if, it's, if it's all professionals or singles or families um, or retired couples or, you know, divorcees, all of those types of things come into play with how we design the property. Tenants will come and go. So we never design around an individual at all. We're always designing for that community feel and what the overall tenant base is and what we're trying to elevate it to. I can hear the the passion when you talk about this. It's it's really cool to hear. And so it's obvious to me that you view design as a really integral part of the multifamily world. Like, can you talk to me a little bit about why you feel that way and how you ended up continuing to specialize in multifamily. Sure. I think what I found when I really started getting into it and started working with teams uh, 12 or 13 years ago is that, you know, it's a pretty male dominated industry and the guys on these syndication teams love talking about construction and, you know, like, doing all of this exterior renovation and adding balconies and patios and, uh, you know, even like bark parks or those kind of things. But they don't always consider what is the tenant wanting or what is the tenant seeing when they come in. And, you know, studies show that if a couple is looking for an apartment, a husband and wife or a couple or whatever, it's typically the woman who will make the decision about where they will live or not. It, they may make it together eventually, but if there's anything that turns her off and she says, no, absolutely not, then they'll go look somewhere else. So what we do from the design side is be thinking about what is some cohesive branding and imaging, you know, image reputation that we can build around this property so that there's nothing that turn people off when they come in. 
And we're always thinking about what are the first impression spaces? So very first impression is the website. And we actually even work with the teams on how does the website look and what needs to be done to this? This is where people are going first. We need to have amazing images on that website so that when people you know, are considering where they might go look at properties, they at least want to come see it. So that's kind of the first thing is the website. Then the next thing is really when they pull up to the leasing office. I mean, can you find it easily? Is the signage good? The navigation signage good where you can find the leasing office? Does everything look super neat and clean driving in? Like, is there any barrier? Is there trash? Is there, are there dumpsters that are overloaded? Um, you know, are there broken things around? Are there lone shoes laying off on the, in the grass? Those kinds of things. So on the way to the leasing office is the very most important thing. What does that look like when you pull up? So we're always looking at that exterior of the leasing office. And sometimes we'll even make that look different than the rest of the property. Let's say that the whole property is brick. Um, at, you know, brick exterior, and you don't want to paint it. You haven't budgeted to paint the brick, but we might paint the brick on just the leasing office so that it stands out, you know, more. Yeah. So when people come up, what does that look like as they walk up, drive up? What does the signage look like right there? When they come up to the uh, walkway, is it super neat? Has it been power washed? Is it, you know, swept? What does the rug look like that they step onto before they come in? That should be cleaned every morning before before starting the day, you know, by the on-site team. Uh, what does the landscaping look like as they pull up? When they get to the door, is it scratched? Is it, you know, worn? Does the door handle look all old? Those things people notice. You have to think of this like a model home, like people are going to look at a model home. People that live in apartments a lot of times want to buy a home. They just can't qualify for a home, or maybe it's not a right timing in their life for a home. And they still want that look of a model home. So we're trying to always replicate that. When they open the door, does it squeak? That That is one of our biggest things when we're looking at, as we go on site to look at the property is what are these things that are hindrances to people not wanting to live there? And if it squeaks, that tells them the property's not maintained. Then as soon as they come in, what is that first impression? It should be something super dramatic, um, not a desk right there. We want it to be like a lounge or something. So something super cool and pretty. That's that first impression, like, wow, you know, something memorable because a lot of times they're looking at different properties throughout the day. They'll go look at five or six properties. So how can you set yourselves apart, you know, from other properties? Like they might go, oh, I remember that one had that really cool orange lounge or that really dramatic modern lighting or whatever it is. So that's the mm -hmm. first thing is what does it look like? Second thing we're always thinking is what does it smell like? It should be super clean, fresh, um, you know, cleaning solution from, from cleaning the floors or an air freshener system, not smelling like trash or somebody's lunch that wasn't emptied yesterday or um, smoke or any of those things. Like even if the maintenance staff smokes, having them in there, if it smells like smoke at all, you got to be aware of those things. And those are the things that from a design standpoint, as, as our team comes in, we're making all these notes and sharing it with the ownership team because they don't know, you know, what happens in, in many cases. The other thing we always recommend is that the ownership team ask the property management company's onsite team to always stand when someone comes in and greet someone. And that's something we rarely see, but it makes a big difference. And we require that on my properties that I own. Um, that they stand and greet them. And if they're on the phone or if they're with another, you know, tenant, tenant or something, then to at least wave and say, hi, I'll be right with you, that type of thing. So greeting somebody immediately upon entry is something we're always watching for. We always check the bathrooms. The bathroom should be just as clean and neat um, as everything else. The desk shouldn't be cluttered. There shouldn't be personal items all over the place from the on-site staff. This needs to look like a business. This is a business. Um, and, you know, have it look like a model home when you come in. So those are some of the things that we're thinking about. We also always look at all the exterior elements, like what is the brick color if you're keeping the brick? And that brick color should go with the branding. So sometimes people will call us in when they've already come up with the name, they've already gotten their logo, their new logo, and it doesn't go with the property at all. You know, if the property is red brick and very traditional, how do you pull that together if you're trying to go modern? How do you blend those two styles? So we work with teams all the time to make sure that there's very cohesive branding throughout.
Awesome. Yeah, it's really, really great to hear your attention to detail. And it makes sense to me why you've received such recognition from your work. It's to me, it's not just interior design that you're doing. You're talking about creating a, a really phenomenal environment for everybody that's involved with the building. And so when you think about what you have to offer and to teach, and you have a clear vision for how you can create that environment, how do you marry that with what the initial vision or expectation of the ownership group is? Yeah, I think the first time we work with a team, it's so interesting because you're just getting to know this team. You don't know them. They don't know you. We spend a lot of time building that foundation up front. We do an introductory Zoom call with all the team members on the call. We walk through our portfolio and what all we offer and how we work with people and how we can help and talk about priorities for, for your property and what stage it's in. And we really talk a lot about the business plan because by the time we come in at that point, the business plan has already been designed. <laughs> you know, um, sometimes they can change it. Like maybe they're going to spend this much on something and and only this much on the design. And we need to request, could that be shuffled around? Because this is not enough to do what needs to be done, you know, on this property to make a change. Um, so we're really getting to know them and, and kind of what their thought process is. One of the challenges that we find is in most cases, they have not budgeted enough for like the leasing office or the model unit. It's sort of a superfluous thing, like an extra thing that they don't really consider. They'll put tons of money in all these exterior, you know, things that guys think are so fun, um, but not as much on all the visual things, which girls think are so much fun and, and, and really they're the ones appreciate. Checking the apartment. Yes. And they're the ones making the final decisions usually. So um, we spend a lot of time on that. And then regarding design, sometimes there is someone on the team that loves design and they want to be very involved. And uh, that's super fun for us too, to work with them. And sometimes they do have something in their mind that's design related. And so then, you know, particularly like, let's say if we're working on a, an exterior paint renovation and we're going to do renderings, maybe you just want to change all the accent colors or you want to paint the brick and we do renderings of those. Uh, maybe they had something specific in their mind. And so it's our job to be super objective and to be professional and to use our skills and to use our background and to use everything that we've shown from our experience turns these properties fast when you get ready to sell um, and make sure you know that we're getting occupancy up, that renewals are good, all those kind of things. So that's what we're bringing to the table. And there are many times when we have to explain, you know, the architecture of this property is a certain way or the architecture of the leasing office is a certain way. So how far can we take that? How much can we change that depending on what you're going to do, what you want to do? If you can go in and paint all the brick and, and it can be, you know, white and blue and, you know, all these different things, do murals and things like that, you can make a very traditional property look super modern. But if you don't have the budget, if that wasn't in your business plan to paint the brick and it's very traditional orange brick or red brick or something, then we can only take it to what we call transitional. We'll blend some modern in, some modern elements in, but we can't go all the way, you know, to straight modern in many cases. Um, so we're always talking about those things and and giving options. When we do designs, when we actually start on the designs and we do renderings of, of spaces, we always give options because we want to show them, okay, it could look like this, maybe it's this color palette, or it could look like this, or we could have this floor plan layout in the leasing office or the model unit, or we could have this one and um, then let them choose. We want it to be a collaborative you know, process, but we're always going to be honest. You know, We're not going to recommend something or, or say, yeah, we'll go, we'll go ahead and order all of that just because they want that because it's our name on it too. And we want to make sure that it, it looks amazing. It feels right. We know what works to make these properties get elevated. Phenomenal. And so when you think about that iterative collaborative process, can you walk us through that a little bit more for like the day in the life of somebody working with you? And what should people consider from a timing perspective if they want to get a jump on designing? Uh, like how far in advance should they be thinking about these projects? Sure. As I mentioned, it's really good for us to come in at the LOI stage. And what I was talking about earlier is when we start working with the team for the first time, they don't know any of this and how we work and how we can help and those kind of things. But 
once we've gone through one project with them, they typically get us in very early the next time. They can put the right numbers in their pro forma, you know, for their budget. And then we keep moving forward with them deal after deal after deal as they acquire more properties. And that's actually how we started working on properties across the country, not just the Dallas-Fort Worth area, because people started buying in Atlanta and Nashville and Phoenix and, um, you know, just all over and Alabama. So we keep moving with them wherever, wherever they go. So the process is they reach out to us saying they either have a deal or they're, they have an LOI accepted or they're putting in an LOI and they, they need some help with budgets. And once we've done it, they, they probably know the budgets for the next one if it's about the same size property. But we like to come in early. Then what we do is we set up an introductory Zoom call and we talk in depth about that property. And we, we study the website. We're looking at everything about it, like what are the amenities on the property already? What are you thinking? Uh, what about the balconies? You know, all the different areas. Um, there, there's so many different things about each property. They're like they're like children or babies to us. We get so excited when we start with a new one because there's so much possibility and so much potential to make it better. You know, with these properties, we specialize in B and C class properties typically. Um, you know, B plus too. I mean, we work on A class properties also, but they're not the value add ones that you see with, you know, B and C class. So we do that introductory Zoom call first. Then once we've really determined what the budget range is, we take a 10% retainer of for the project. And then we start working on designs. And so we do all the designs in our studio. We have a big studio in the DFW area in Texas. And then we present to them virtually. So all the owners or GP team or whoever wants to be on the call, the asset management team, the on-site manager, anybody who wants to be on that Zoom call and the ownership team wants them to be on can be on. And we present, we present all of the designs all the way through and they pick their favorites. And we always stay within that budget range that we agreed upon. And then once the designs or their favorites are chosen, we take a deposit half down, we place all the orders, we track everything from there on out. And what happens during this phase is that there are a lot of things that are maybe construction related, and we don't do construction. We work with the ownership team's contractor um, on any renovations that need to be made that are construction related. We're providing all the furnishings. So we sell all the rugs, lamps, pictures, mirrors, um, you know, art, wall art, all those kind of things, anything that could go in the space that's furnishings, lighting, desks, um, beds all of those elements, but we're not the ones doing construction. So if they need to have exterior paint done, we're doing the paint renderings and we're choosing all the colors. And then we just turn it over to the contractor who's doing the work. So during that process of things ordered and we're waiting on things to come in, we have created a big checklist for the ownership team and for the contractor to be working on so that we're all on the same page. Like you're doing this, we're doing this, you know, y'all still need to work on this. Um, this needs to be completed by this time, those kinds of things. So we track it all the way through. We're, we're very systems oriented at Landry Designs and make sure that things don't fall through the cracks after years and years of doing this. We know kind of some of the things that can go wrong. So then it takes from, from that time, from ordering until installation, the big reveal day, we call it, is about eight to 12 weeks. So it takes a while, you know, for everything to come in, depending on what all we're doing. And we make sure prior to that big reveal day that all that contractor checklist is done. And that's the challenges that we've come across is not anything really from a design perspective that's too challenging because we can, you know, tackle any project. We love working on all different kinds of um, projects. But when the contractor hasn't gotten his things done and maybe our installation is scheduled, then we have to typically push the installation back. So. That's why we try to keep it very collaborative. We're doing check-in calls, making sure that everybody's on track. And there are some things that happen that are out of people's control. And, you know, we know that. And so we have to push it back. But the, the day of the installation, we attend, even if it's out of state, um, we're there with our installers and we just place everything. We hang everything. We place everything. Um, we organize everything. And then we, you know, have them close their eyes and open, you know, for the big reveal at the end. So that's kind of the overall process. It's super fun. We're trying to take as much off the ownership's team plate as possible um, because it, it's a lot. I, I'm an asset manager on one of my deals and it's a lot. There's a lot that you do on a regular basis and, and what can we take off? 
It must be exciting to see everybody's faces when the, the big reveal happens. Oh my gosh. Well, the on-site team, I mean, sometimes they cry. It's it's such a change for them. I mean, they're, you know, the apartment community is really a small community. And a lot of these on-site teams have worked a lot of different places and they might move around and that kind of thing. And for them to have an environment that looks so amazing. And again, these are B and C class properties typically, but we always want it to look like an A class, you know, leasing office and model unit. We don't have to spend those prices, but we want that look. For them to be able to sort of like work in a model home every day, they're just so proud. And, um, you know, they just tell us that it makes it a lot easier to sign people up, to get renewals and all of that. And it does, it changes lives. I mean, that's why we became designers is because we know that these kinds of things change lives. So it changes the lives of the people who work there, the lives of the people who live there, uh, all of the community, you know, itself, we're looking at, we're looking at where does trash end up on the property? Like, why is there, why are there always bags of McDonald's like here and here and here? Well, probably because there's no trash can right there. So we're always suggesting those kind of things, like how do we make sure that the property stays maintained? We sell a lot of pool furniture. And this is an example where I go on site to properties all the time and the pool furniture looks terrible. It's all beige. They went to Home Depot or something and got a bunch of pool furniture and just stuck it out there. Maybe there's umbrellas, but they're never opened. You know, we think that's a super important element, A, for the you know people who live there to be able to enjoy it. Uh, B, when you're doing tours, like with potential residents, what does that look like? And then C, the website. We need that picture for the website to look amazing and it needs to look the same, you know, in person. So I always recommend a lot of color around the pool. And the on-site team, we have a checklist for them after we do the big reveal, like, you know, first thing in the morning, obviously y'all need to do trash, like walk and do trash every morning and make sure that that gets done before even working on work orders or anything like that. Um, but then go open all of the umbrellas, unless it's a super windy day, you know, open all of the umbrellas at the pool, turn on all the lamps in the leasing office, turn on all the lamps in the model unit, make sure the air is turned down, you know, all those kind of checklist things that you would just assume they would do or know they don't a lot of times. And it changes the feel of the property. It just shows that you pay attention to the details. Yeah. And as you talk, it's very clear that your experience as a property owner has really informed how you consult around design. What was that journey like for you to learn as a property owner and then take that to your design business? Yeah, I think when I started looking at investing, the thing that I learned that I didn't know was about NOI. You know, I, I just really didn't understand that I couldn't figure out why they would buy them and sell them so quickly, you know, and, and it's really because you're elevating it. I didn't know they were valued differently. Um, I didn't know that they're valued based on the NOI, the net operating income versus like residential is, you know, where it's comps and things like that. So I, I actually went to what I call YouTube University and started listening to a million, you know, uh, videos and podcasts and all, all those kinds of things and learning all the technology and terminology and um, just everything kind of behind the scenes that happens that I didn't really know from the design side of working on it for at least 10 years. And just got super interested. I ended up going to a mentorship program, went to conferences across the country and just learned as much as I could, read books, everything that I could absorb about multifamily. And then it sort of was like an aha moment, like, oh, now I see why they're selling so quickly. It's, it's such a, it's a business and it's such a quick turnover, but we do have to make sure that, you know, the community is taken care of at the same time. Uh, like what kind of events are you having? what kind of newsletter are you sending to your tenants? These are all things that I think now I bring more to the table um, and my team gets trained on all of these things as a, as a business owner, as a multifamily owner versus just being a designer. Yeah, I can imagine that's a huge uh, differentiator and a huge value add to those that you work with. Uh, so on top of all of that, how do you stay up to date on design trends and best practices and everything that's changing within that industry too, to then take that back to your business. Yes. We have a team meeting, an all team meeting at Landry Designs every week. And uh, we do lots and lots of training there. So we're studying everything in design constantly. We're looking at what are the fashion trends in clothing? What are the car color trends? 
uh, car interiors, all those kinds of things. We subscribe to lots of different design magazines. We're going to market. We have vendors come in and do trainings, and we're always looking at what's the newest. And, and even technology, like you mentioned, we're constantly upgrading our technology and our systems. And you have to, in this world, stay ahead of the game or you're behind. And so we're very committed to, uh, you know, stay ahead in technology and, and making things, you know, run very smoothly and again, catching anything that falls through the cracks and changing our system for that the next time. So we're always pivoting. We're very um, committed to, you know, being as close to perfect as we possibly can in our industry. Yeah. And one of the themes that I hear commonly is around eco-friendliness and sustainability, being green. Uh, I can imagine that factors in pretty heavily to what you consider. It it can. Again, it depends on... Uh, what the business plan was for the property. Uh, you know, one of the things that we say a lot of times is when you buy something a little bit nicer, you know, it lasts longer. So buy nicer, buy twice. And when you buy twice, if you've, if you've put something in, like a lot of times what happens is people will buy a property. Someone will go and buy some stuff and put it in the leasing office and they think it looks okay. And it does look okay. It doesn't look amazing. It's not going to be something that looks great on the website. But if they've already done that when they call us in, then we have to come in and redo things. And then those things typically, you know, go to someone else or, or whatever. So you're you're buying more and the world is having to produce more and things are going into the landfills more. So mm -hmm. we're always aware of, of that is how do we make sure that you only do it once and do it right, you know? And then the second thing is not having things too cluttered, not not buying more things than you need, not having accessories everywhere. Um, we want things to be neat and clean and sparse and fresh and easy to maintain. So we're always thinking, you know, from that, that side of things as well. Yeah. I, uh, I say a similar phrase. It's funny. People can't afford to do things the first time, but they can find a way to afford it the second time when they don't, yeah. do, you know? Yes. Yeah. We, we want to make sure that every dollar that you spend going forward is the correct dollar, that you're not wasting money on something. And even paint, I mean, that sometimes people call us in when they've already tried to do exterior paint on their own. And they're like, this color is just not right. We can't figure out what's wrong. And we spent all this money now and it's terrible, you know, that those kinds of things. So we, we like to be part of the team at the very beginning. And we're here to help build the ownership team up and the property management company. We work with them, you know, as well. We're help, here to help build everyone up and, and let everybody do better and, and enjoy their, you know, their multifamily life. Yeah. And having the perspective of the owner and the designer, I can imagine you've heard every common mistake and misconception and now can probably understand where people are coming from. Can you talk to us about some of those? I really think it's like what I mentioned about people not thinking that design is that important um, and multifamily. And, you know, from our perspective, it's the most important thing. It's the first impression of everything. So, um, you know, there are many times where they just, they'll spend a lot, a lot of money on things that are not very visible and not the money where people see it. Mm -hmm. um, and I do think it's important to do things like LED lighting around the property so that you know, people feel safe when they come in at night. And we're always looking at even like when you walk to the model unit, th this is very common when we go to a property, we'll walk to see the model unit that they currently have or one that they're considering. And the breezeway is filthy, you know, right there. The front doormat to that model unit is filthy. The door's all dented and, you know, things like that. And uh, the stairs are filthy when you start walking up the stairs. So how can you you know, avoid those things and make sure there's no, again, barriers to entry for people that are coming to look at the property. Um, again, the trash around the property, all, all those kinds of things. It just seems like people get immune to it. They don't see it anymore. The people that work there. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what we're trying to point out. And, and typically the, the ownership team is not there there. They might stop by every once in a while and, and maybe they don't even live in the area, but if you're not there, daily and, and we're there very frequently during this process you're not hearing what are people saying when they come in what are these potential residents saying what what is the on-site property management company saying in response to these questions we hear all that they sort of forget that we're there and yeah. so we hear a lot of what happens when the owners aren't there and 
that's our job is to share that with the ownership team. Absolutely. I want to hear more about some of the outcomes you've helped achieve with, with everybody, because really this, again, this attention to detail is amazing. What's maybe one story where that was particularly, or project that was particularly rewarding or challenging for you? I'd love to hear um, some more specifics around something like that. Um, well, and I don't know if this will get showed by video, but I do have like some before and afters of of properties that I'm always happy to share, or, you know, show you. But um, everyone is so is so different. It, it's taking you know these C class properties a lot of times or B minus and completely elevating the look of things. Like there was one, for example, that had trellises like metal railroad trellises in this this leasing office area and they were black and they were real heavy looking and the owner was was saying you know we're thinking we might just take those down they're not um, structural they were just added at some point and and you know I looked at it and I was like I just think those are so cool let's just paint them silver we painted the ceiling black we put chrome really spiky modern lighting in there um you know anything can be changed and and improved to to be some kind of dramatic thing so we're always looking for what's unique about this property what's architecturally unique again what is the brick color and making sure that we use the color palette in let's say the leasing office that looks like that had another one recently where the floors were wood they were parquet and they they were very expensive floors they were real you know wood they needed to be refinished the ceiling was also wood. It was like wood slats, like the whole ceiling of this leasing office was wood slats and it was brown and the floor was brown. And then there was a brick fireplace that was two stories high that was like red brick. Um, and so our idea was if we have to save budget somewhere, let's keep the flooring, even though it's not in great condition, it could be like resurfaced or whatever, you know, sanded and kind of refinished. Let's keep the flooring because it's pretty cool with the parquet. But what if we painted the fireplace black all the way to the ceiling and painted the whole ceiling black, the wood ceiling that was two stories high? And it was a huge ceiling. It was a really big space. And we were, you know, we're always hesitant to recommend that to somebody because it's such a big thing, like paint all this wood, you know, paint all the brick, that kind of thing. But um, luckily he was like, let's do it. And that that project turned out so cool. We did really, um, we did pale gray walls. We did black trim everywhere in the whole space and bright, vivid yellow furniture, you know, so it was silvers and blacks and grays and yellow and just super pretty. And the brick outside was like a reddish sort of color. So we, we needed to make sure that that yellow and black and all that went with that reddish brick, but it just turned out amazing. I mean, the before and after that property was, was super cool. The other thing that we did there, and we do this a lot is a lot of times they don't have a business center in the leasing office. And it's not even that you necessarily need the business center, but it is an amenity to list in your list, you know, to add to your list and to show on the website. So they had this one little area that was like a, a little niche sort of, and they just had a couple of chairs in there with a little table and it was just boring and nobody ever used it. We asked, we always asked, does somebody ever sit here? They're like, no, nobody ever sits over there. So we turned that into a little business center. We put a couple of desks there. We put some really cool art above it. We put great lighting there, some neat chairs. Um, and then that was photographed and that became the business center on the website. And it is a place where people could sit and, you know, just work on the computer or fill out paperwork or, you know, check their phone or, or whatever. It's another neat little amenity to have. Absolutely. With everybody working from home now, I'm sure. I know for me, I want to get out of my apartment once in a while and change the scenery and could appreciate a room like that. That's a, yeah. that's a um, and as we wrap up too, I think we covered a lot of this question that I'm about to ask, but is there anything else from an investor perspective that when you're evaluating either a property or uh, from a passive standpoint, those that you work with, what kinds of questions or considerations did we not talk about today that you might um, advise folks to consider? I think when I'm walking a new property with a new ownership team, a buying team, or even one that I'm looking at, I'm really... I'm really looking at everything, you know, about the property. It's it's all the little things that that make a property look well well maintained and well loved and and I believe that any property can be elevated. I mean, I know if it's an area we don't really work on D-class properties because they're crime areas and that kind of thing. I know if it's an area that's crime ridden, it's very difficult to to elevate that property. But other than that, I'm always looking for what's different, what's unique, what's what's really 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 bad about this property. 
And how can we fix that? And how can we change that? And how can we do that in the least expensive way? You know, we're, we're trying to think of where can we save money, but where do we have to spend the money? Do we do we really need to add a grill station, you know, to this property? Is it a safe area to add a grill station to? Could we get by with just an arbor and then put really great furniture underneath it? Um, that wall is such an eyesore. Could we add a mural there? Um, we had one recently that the exterior, it was on a street. It was right on a street. And the exterior of the property was had all been painted gray. It was like brick. And it looked like an army barracks or something it looked terrible. And so, you know, we completely redid that paint scheme and added a mural and stuff to the front of that. And oh my gosh, it just people that drive by, that's their that's where they get most of their tenants now is from drive by, which they didn't before, you know, oh. at all. So we we like finding things that are wrong with the property and because we know that there's ways of of turning it around. It's an opportunity. Yeah. 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 That's amazing. So, uh, Lisa, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'm, I have a feeling that people are going to want to follow up with you. Where can they find you? Just go to our website, LandryDesigns.com, and there's a contact us form on there where you can just send in information. Our phone number's on there. You're welcome to call and talk to the studio. We have a full team, a design team that uh, are all multifamily specialists. That's one of the first things we train our designers on when we hire them. And we have a great support team there, you know, the receptionist all the way to the management um, we're all, you know, here to provide help and, and help you grow in your multifamily business. Phenomenal. And we'll put your information in the, the video notes as well. And for those that want to network with, uh, individuals like Lisa or others in the real estate world, or even just get information on upcoming, um, deals or opportunities to invest in, feel free to go to momentummultifamily.com and join that investor portal in the top right corner to get, more information on everything multifamily. Um, Lisa, again, phenomenal interview. Really enjoyed speaking with you and I uh, hope to do so again soon. Thanks, Brendan. Thanks for having me. Of course.